Hello, my name's Ian and uh, welcome to my Peugeot Boxer camper van build. Uh, this is sort of episode one but not really in the fact that if from the start um, I started this build probably back in June last year uh, where I sort of started cutting holes in it, putting the skylights in, um, putting all the windows in, that type of thing. I've uh, put a um, 90 litre underslung water tank in, um, I think 60 litre waste, waste tank in there as well. Uh, done one or two other things to it, um, more bodywork type of things. Uh, there was quite a bit of damage on the van when I first got it, so I've changed one of the back doors. I've had the sill uh, repaired where it was damaged underneath the sliding door and a few other bits and bobs as well. So uh, this camper van build as it stands at the moment is sort of part way through and I've joined probably about three different videos that I've taken together uh, just to give you an idea of where we are now. Um, and then what I'll then do is try and um, sort of do some more regular videos then of, uh, of, of how I'm going along. Uh, so to start off with, I'll put a few photographs in of what the van looked like before we started. And the state it was in, it was actually owned by a guy who raced greyhounds and it was a rather smelly of doggy wee when we first got it. Uh, but we gave it a damn good cleaning out, uh, which took a good few days and it probably took the best part of three months for the smell of dogweed to actually disappear out of the van even though we'd stripped all the plywood out of it given everything a really good scrub uh, but at least now by the top now I'm sticking uh, materials in there um, th those sort of smells are now sort of getting in there and uh, sort of dissipating the smell of the dogweed out of it but uh, yeah it's, um, it's a 2016 Peugeot Boxer um, H2L4 now in the, one of the videos I think I say it's the and actually an H4L2 but it's the wrong it's, it's actually the length 4 height 2 so you can actually stand up in it it's actually the extra long wheelbase version uh, which is the longest version that uh, Peugeot do of that type of van it's got 2.3 litre diesel engine uh, the van itself has actually done 94,000 miles uh, I've used it probably t used it probably done about a thousand miles in it since I've had it so I actually used it to tow my caravan um, which is quite an interesting thing because I've got this when I've got the caravan on the back and the length of the van about the length of an articulated lorry uh, <laughs> which is uh, quite good fun and then you then try to uh, to park it maneuver it etc uh, but the plan is that I'll actually sell my caravan shortly uh, so if anyone wants to buy a uh, 2010 Sterling Onyx uh, caravan with a fixed bed uh, give me a shout uh, but anyway, right to the video, so as I said what I'll do is I'll stick some photographs in to begin with and then what we'll then do is add the, um, the videos in that I've taken and then I'll come back to you at the end. Hi, my name's Ian. Welcome to my Peugeot Boxer camper van build. Uh, this is a L2 H4 model Peugeot Boxer 2.2 diesel, 130 brake horsepower version. As you can see, I've started insulating it uh, and vapor barrier it. So I've got insulation down in the middle there towards the back, um, and then coming round towards the back doors. There you can see the ceiling's all been insulated, foil taped. Uh, back doors I've just uh, put some uh, vapour barrier just over the top of the doors at the moment uh, and then moving around to the left hand side or the right hand side of the van depending which way you're looking at it uh, you can see I've vapour barriered all the way down this side now and just uh, getting to the point now where I need to start looking at uh, just putting some foil tape over the top of these windows uh, well the, the, uh, the timber above the window should I say um, uh, and then I'll also then uh, look at then starting getting to put the uh, the plywood over the top of it. Uh, see, I've got the uh, access point down there already cut for the uh, for the cassette toilet that's going to go in there. This van's going to have a uh, a fixed bed. <coughs> um, it's going to have a wardrobe in it, uh, full bathroom, kitchen. Um, I'm going to be putting in an underslung gas tank uh, underneath the van itself. Uh, I've got the Truma um, 4 I think it is combi boiler going to go in there as well. Um, um, 
and then it's, so it's basically going to be a fully fledged motorhome really uh, like the ones that you actually buy but obviously for quite a much cheaper price uh, than what you'd normally pay for a new one uh, as you can see in there I've got uh, skylight in that's going to be above the actual uh, the bathroom area uh, and then down towards the back there we've got a skylight in which will be over the top of the bed and then moving round towards the front uh, I've then got a big skylight in uh, that I put in uh, which will be over the actual um, the lounge area what we're planning on doing here is the lounge itself is only going to be the um, the driver and passenger seats themselves which are on swivel plates uh, and then moving down towards where this little window is here there'll be a table coming out um, from one side and then looking at maybe putting another table just the lights a bit right there we're going to swing off the left hand side uh, just by the door there so it's going to have to have two tables coming in there one for the passenger and one for the driver's side of the vehicle itself moving on to around here so just to the right of this window is where the wardrobe is going to sit and then just to the right of that is where obviously where the bathroom area is going to be fixed bed will come across uh, above the wheel arches across to the uh, to the other side of the van and then the kitchen area will start just some from the right hand side of this wheel arch here and it's going to come across then uh, to probably about halfway across the sliding door itself uh, the other thing i've bought as well is a um i've got a, a full fly screen uh, door system that's going to go across there as well to stop any insects getting in when we've got the sliding door open uh, anyway that's it for now so uh, perhaps do uh, another catch up uh, in a bit hi uh, welcome again to uh, my Peugeot Boxer uh, uh, van conversion um, turning this into a motorhome um, as you can see since the last video I've now ply lined uh, all the walls out floors now been screwed down as well um, it's got some uh, conduits uh, just uh, either side of the floor there so I can run my cables and also run some uh, hot and cold water piping as well. Uh, I've uh, put some plastic around the outside of where the toilet uh, cassette will pull in and out of there. Um, because of the shape of these Peugeot Boxer vans, uh, also the same with the Ducatos and the uh, Citroen Relay, there's a bit of a bump in the wall. Um, <laughs> I've seen a few people trying different ways of getting around it, but I just decided I was going to box it out, um, which... Uh, isn't going to cause me too much problems. Uh, I might just cut out around my shower tray when I get that in there just to go around it and also then when I get my wardrobe wall in there as well that really just be cut around it as well. But, uh, that's not really going to be too much of an issue. Um, so uh, tomorrow I'm uh, off to Magnum Motorhomes up in Grimsby to get uh, all the furniture board I need, uh, the ceiling board uh, so I can get that to all nice and white at the top there. Um, also as well I'm probably going to pick up a sink uh, a few other bits and bobs uh, while I'm there as well but uh, yeah probably he's going to be spending a fortune I would have thought <laughs> anyway not to worry but uh, yeah so uh, that's where we are at the moment um, not too much to see really um, but uh, yeah been quite a bit of work but uh, quite enjoyable at the same time uh, so uh, yeah that's it for now just started um, mocking up more or less where I want my trim boiler to sit uh, as well as the consumer unit that's uh, the uh, the boiler unit is going to be sat under a, a bench seat uh, and then the consumer unit will actually be located located within the wardrobe itself uh, the unit will actually move over very slightly to the right because I need to cut the shower tray down probably by about 40 mil um, also I've mocked up as well more or less where my sink in my uh, in my, in my shower room is going to sit as well. They actually need to extend my um, box section out a little bit because the actual sink itself is 290, I think it is, and my wall area that I've got there on the um, on the boxing is 220, I think. So I just need to bring that out by about another 70 mil, something like that, it will uh, get me where I need to be. Um, so yeah, that's just where we are at the moment uh, with it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, really good to start to uh, getting things mocked up a little bit and getting excited about fitting it all. Right, carry on. Right, bit of an update from the uh, the last video I've done. Uh, today I've been doing a bit of first fix wiring for um, the control units for the um, trimmer boiler and also for the sergeant uh, uh, unit, which uh, eventually, uh, once I get the uh, cables pulled out, um, basically somewhere around where my finger is, 
is around here is going to be where the control unit is going to be uh, for those. Uh, also got some uh, wires dangling out now for the lights, uh, for the skylights themselves. They've got built-in LEDs into them, so yeah, that's the uh, lighting in for that. Uh, also uh, run a cable for the lighting for the, uh, the skylights in the bathroom as well, because that's got again got LEDs around it. And the same for the skylight, which is going to be over the bed. That's uh, also got uh, LED lights as well. So uh, the rest of the lighting will be built into the actual wall units themselves, which will actually run. Um, obviously, once they build the units themselves, so they'll, the wiring will be within them. Uh, other thing I've done today is uh, fixed the vapor barrier uh, to the ceiling, and I've fixed a little black trim just along the back edge there. That's where the actual ceiling board will run up against. Uh, once we get that in, which uh, probably start that either tonight or tomorrow. Um, and that's probably about it for now. Well, over the last few days, I've now been fitting the ceiling board, and all the way across the ceiling was a bit of a game. And also, I've um, sort of returned the ceiling board just down the side on the little return there as well. And I've just found in the garage like a bit of trim just to sort of finish that line off. It's not absolutely spot on, but then again, all this lot will be um, sort of behind, for most of the majority of it, uh, behind wall units, which is going to be all the way down there. Uh, probably see a very small bit towards the end, uh, but that's about it. Uh, so fitted the trim on that side, I've actually not got any more at the moment, but I'll get some more tomorrow. Um, and then I've still got to fit it on this side, as you can see there's a gap all the way down there at the moment. Uh, just tied the cables up out the way. Uh, got the skylight covers on now. These actually got built-in LEDs into them. Uh, done a test on those, so they all work okay. Uh, I've not actually wired in the bathroom one yet because that's probably got to come down at some point. Uh, when I come to fit the actual uh, bathroom walls themselves, I might have to trim it down very slightly to get it to fit. But uh, we'll see when we get to that. Uh, got some more cables just dangling down there. Obviously finished off the uh, the ceiling board down there. Really put the trim on there again. Uh, we've got the skylight cover on the big, uh, the big one at the front there, so that all now works. Uh, just a little demonstration here. The, uh, the one back, and we've also then got the fly screen that across this side as well. These are the Skymax ones. Uh, they're not quite as good, I don't think, as the Heckies uh, in the build quality themselves. Uh, it does make me wonder how long uh, <laughs> they might actually get last. Uh, but then again, we have just had this, uh, these two storms, and I must say they've uh, stood it very well to them. So uh, fingers crossed, I'll be okay now. So that's the little one in there, bathroom, and then the one down the bottom end there for the, uh, for the bedroom end of the van itself. So yeah, there we go. Um, next job probably is going to be the floor. Uh, I've got the lino for it, so uh, that'll get put in shortly. Uh, I actually noticed today that my toilet door, I think, has got a leak on it. Um, maybe where of fix the metal work uh, to it uh, on the outside. We all have this really heavy rain. Now when I whether something's got in there, a bit of capillary reaction, I'm not quite sure, but the actual plywood at the bottom there is damp. Uh, so I just need to have a, a re-look at that. Uh, wait until the better weather comes. Um, and hopefully then perhaps can pull it out and reseal it. Uh, yeah, that one's sorted. Uh, so that's about it for now. So uh, that's where we are at this moment in time. Um, I have made a few changes. In one of the earlier videos mentioned about the fact we were going to not have uh, a seating area at the front. Well, well, well a, a separate seating area. Um, we're going to just have it as the two um, passenger seats swiveled round with separate tables. But we've now decided to um, put in a, another seat. Uh, so we're going to making the wardrobe slightly thinner than what we were going to and then literally over the top of where the boiler is going to sit is where we're going to have a seating area as well so we'll be able to sit both sides of the table itself when it goes in um, so yeah it was, uh, you sometimes sort of sit there scratching your head sometimes thinking no nah, I don't want to do it that way I'm going to do it a different way um, and through the whole of this build <coughs> from the beginning <laughs> so far uh, there's been quite a lot of head scratching and the uh, the DVLA didn't help things either by uh, changing their rules and regulations so I had to end up putting an extra window in um, I've got to be looking to put some decals on the outside of it as well because I do want to actually change the uh, van type or the type of vehicle type uh, from being a panel van to a motorhome 
uh, and get it registered as a motorhome itself. So uh, the DVLA changed some rules and regs going back a little while. I think it was October last year, something like that. So we, you're going to have to put some decals on. As I said, I put a third window in there. So I've got two windows down one side. Um, I've also got to put an awning uh, on there, a pull-out awning, which I was going to do anyway. So that's not really too much of a problem. So really, the only extras really you need to put on there is uh, when I get it finished, is the decals really, and uh, it should hopefully then get passed by the DVLA uh, when I finished it. Uh, as I said, this is where we are at the moment. Uh, I will stick some extra videos up once I've done a bit more. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, any questions, any comments you've got, uh, please ask or please make comments or subscribe if you want to to my channel if you want to uh, see about more videos coming out as well. Uh, but yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching and uh, see you again.